Hello everyone, this is Dr. Dan from Access Analog and this video is going to cover two areas, the buffer setting and the transmit format. We get questions from users saying what are the optimal settings and that's different for every person based on how far away you are from us and what the sample rate is for your DAW. So let me go through this. The first thing we want to start with is set your buffer to 2500 milliseconds, which is the maximum. And then you should set, try to set your transmit format to the same sample rate as what your DAW is running at. We want to minimize the number of sample rate conversions. So set it to whatever your DAW is. As you can see, we have all four major choices. And then set it to 24 bit. Now see if you can run in that mode with no underflows in your buffer history. In my case, I am able to do that, but let's say, for example, you were having underflows at this rate, then what you would want to try next is to drop down to lossless 44.1 16-bit. When you do that, that's going to require less internet bandwidth, which will allow some people to then stream in real time better without any underflows. Let's say that still doesn't work for you. Then you want to drop down to one of the compressed modes and you go lower and lower until you're able to run in a compressed way where you're not having underflows and you can hear the audio and it's working well for you. You can hear it so that it's continuous and you get good output. Then you can set your settings for the gear based on that. And people will then ask, well, how do I do a bounce if I'm not able to run in lossless maximum 24 bit? And that's an easy answer. Then you just use the offline processor, the enhanced offline processor that we have here, and that will upload the audio in pristine quality, bounce it in the cloud, store it to the cloud, and then you can download that pristine later. So just know that being able to, if you're not able to run in full lossless and 24 bit, that's not an issue. So now I've got my transmit format set for me optimally, which is lossless 441, 24 bit again, matching my DAW sample rate. And now I want to change my buffer. The idea here is you want to go as low as possible while still allowing for no underflows on your buffer history. For me, I know where it roughly 600 milliseconds, I am no longer able to stream reliably. For sure, 340 milliseconds, I get underflows almost immediately which is interesting because I'm only 20 miles away from our server. So it's, I would have thought I would be able to do that, but I've never been able to run that way. For me, I, I like to run mostly safe at 1,000 milliseconds. And again, the idea for you should be to start at 25 and reduce it and go as low as you can while still not having any underflows. Now, the trade-off here is to, there's, there are several trade-offs. The lower you go, the less delay there is from the amount of time when you make a change until the time you hear it. So let me turn this up. And you will see that if with 1,000, well, I'll go all the way to 2,500. With a long delay, then I move this, and it doesn't actually take effect until a little bit later. Again, I'm going to change this. And it won't take time, it won't take effect until later. So the longer this delay is, the more resilient you are, which is good. But the problem is now any changes you make to the gear take longer for you to be able to hear them. That's why you want to set it to a thousand milliseconds or whatever the lowest rate is. Now there are two other caveats, and these are specific to Pro Tools and Logic users. For any other DAW user, the DAW is able to compensate. No matter what setting we have here, the DAW is able to compensate for it, and it doesn't matter. However, Pro Tools and Logic are different. In Pro Tools, they're only able to compensate a small amount, 340 milliseconds. And what that means is if you have two tracks, and our plugin is on one, and it's set to 340 milliseconds, and you have another track here, they will be in sync assuming that you can stream audio at that small buffer size, which most people can't. However, if you go to a larger value, now the Pro Tools is not able to compensate for that larger amount, and these two tracks would be out of sync. The same thing for Logic. They're able to compensate more, up to a millisecond. 
However, if you needed to go larger than that, then these two tracks would be out of sync. And you would need to then go to our website, which there is a way to overcome this. I'm not gonna cover it in the video, but you can set it up manually so you can sync in a way that is allows you to have a larger buffer. I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have anything but Pro Tools and Logic, you're just fine with whatever setting. Gone through that pretty quick. If there's anything that we missed, make sure to hit me up on the support chat. Uh, we're always available. Uh, give us feedback, anything else that doesn't make sense, and we might enhance these videos.